what once seemed like a miraculous place to its early settlers, slowly but surely collapsed under the weight of its own profits and debauchery. And it's now said that the land and all items within this abandoned town are now cursed. This is a strange tale that intertwines legend with history. This is the untold story of Bodie, California. First, a message from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dubby Energy. You ever wonder how you can have enough energy to make it through the workday, work out, and work on a YouTube video? I know I have. That's why I decided to partner with Dubby. They have a ton of flavors to choose from, and Dubby doesn't contain any filler ingredients, or BS. That means no malodextrin, no artificial dyes. However, Dubby does contain vitamins, amino acids, a nootropic formula, and 150 milligrams of naturally sourced caffeine per scoop to power you through whatever it is you need to do today without all the jitters and crash of a normal energy drink. It's also made in America, which to me is important. I personally drink Dubby and I love it, otherwise I wouldn't recommend it to you guys. I urge you to give it a try because really you have nothing to lose. Use the code MYSTERYARCHIVES at w.gg to save 10% on your order now. These flavors are amazing and they tend to go fast, so I don't want you to miss out. So please support me by supporting Dubby today. The year was 1859, and mining had began to decline along the western slope of the Sierra Nevada. Prospectors in search of riches beyond their wildest dreams began to cross the eastern slope. One such man was named William S. Bodie. During his expedition, Bodie would find gold near a place now known as Bodie Bluff. He would make camp there and continue to take his chances in order to collect his riches. His supplies and food would grow scarce, but his stash of gold nuggets was growing ever larger. Powered by his insatiable love for a better life, Bodhi continued on. However, as the year progressed and winter came over the area, he unfortunately would breathe his last breath. Bodhi died in a snowstorm that very winter and would later be discovered by the future inhabitants of the town that would come to bear his name. His story in its own way would manifest within the settlement, even down to its last days. As the search for gold continued, Bodhi's gold vein would be rediscovered, and slowly but surely, a mine was established, as well as a mill. The year was now 1861, and the town known as Bodhi was home to 20 miners. For the next 17 years to come, its population would grow steadily, but it would remain a rather insignificant mining camp, and that was until the mill was sold. Bunker Hill Mine, as it came to be known on the west slope of Bodie Bluff, would change hands several times within the 17 years, until it came into the possession of Standard Mining Company. It was originally sold because the owners of Bunker Hill Mine at the time believed that the well had run dry, so to speak, since their profits and gold discovery had been on a downward trajectory for many years. But after it was sold to Standard, it was as if a miracle had taken place. Just months after the sale, a significant vein of rich gold ore was discovered. Profits as a result rose dramatically. And by 1878, Bodie's population had soared to over 5,000 people. It's estimated that the mine would yield nearly $15 million worth of gold over the next 25 years. Profits that would be worth an estimated $400 million in today's money. Although all seemed to be going great in Bodie, 
there were many hardships yet in store for the fledgling town and its citizens. The winter of 1878 was particularly savage. It's estimated that over 200 people would lose their lives, either due to exposure, hypothermia, or disease. Others would be taken by fallen timber, and one of several explosions to take place within the mines, as the powder magazine mysteriously ignited. But despite the horror of the winter frost, Bodhi continued to grow. People of almost every walk of life would end up there, from miners to gamblers, prostitutes, and businessmen. And by 1879, it had doubled in size to over 10,000 residents. It had added an additional 2,000 buildings, and before long it supported over 30 gold mines, 65 saloons, and untold amounts of brothels, gambling halls, and opium dens. Opposite the brothels, gambling, and opium smoking, the town also had several churches, banks, and schools. Three breweries within the town worked day and night brewing whiskey and 100 gallon barrels because Bodhi seemed to have an insatiable thirst for alcohol. Like a perfect storm, Bodhi would soon earn a reputation for violence, lawlessness, and debauchery of every kind. Killings at times were daily events. Robberies, stick-ups, and street fights all became frequent occurrences as well, as the town seemed to turn its back on God and worship its newfound idol, one of gold and profit. It seemed like the good times for those who indulged themselves would never end, but they would. Given Bodhi's reputation, it's perhaps not surprising that one little girl, whose family was moving to the mining town, reportedly prayed, Goodbye, God. We are going to Bodhi. For all of its construction, Bodhi needed vast amounts of lumber, and the problem was that there were scarce trees in the area. Soon, several businessmen formed the Bodhi and Benton Railroad Company in 1881 for the sole purpose of sustaining that appetite for much-needed lumber. However, for the citizens of Bodhi, this was not a good decision. In order to maximize profits, the company hired an expensive Chinese labor, much to the outrage of the locally unemployed. So with a large influx of cheap foreign labor, it soon helped drive the competing labor costs into the ground. Not just for the railroad, but for mining as well. This marked the beginning of the end of the town. The boom was over just one year later. In 1882, Bodhi started to rapidly decline. Prior to 1882, there were no churches within the town, but there were two preachers, one Methodist and one Catholic, who held services in their private homes. And despite of the town's decline, two churches would be built in 1882, one for each of the two faiths. However, both would not end up surviving. After the merging of Bodhi and the Standard Mining Companies in 1887, the town saw a brief revival in both wealth as well as population, but that too would be short-lived. A series of fires would soon extinguish Bodhi for good. In 1892, a fire ravaged much of the business district, further depleting the population. And in 1898, a massive fire broke out and destroyed the once prosperous mill. And although it was a slow burn, metaphorically speaking, as far as the decline of the town, the final nail in the coffin was in 1932, when a two-year-old boy who had gotten a hold of his father's matches ended up lighting a fire that would destroy 95% of all buildings left within the town. In the years to come, Prohibition and the Great Depression would entomb Bodhi, and although attempts were made to strike new gold, companies' once record profits crashed. We are thus left with a tale of a city 
that flew too close to the sun and burned, showing that chasing profit and vanity, debauchery and lust yielded disastrous long-term consequences. After World War II, only six people lived in the old settlement, and five of these six would soon meet strange and untimely deaths. The first was a man who seemingly went mad. Out of the clear blue sky, he woke up one day, loaded his pistol, and shot his wife in broad daylight in the town center. Three men witnessed this take place and quickly took action, which would lead to the death of the man who had just killed his wife. And this is where things take a very weird turn indeed. According to each man, the ghost of the murdered man would visit them individually, tormenting them and forbidding their rest. Soon, all three would die of a mysterious and painful disease. Details on their condition are scarce, but thick and painful boils were said to envelop them, and within a matter of agonizing weeks, they would all perish. But the strange happenings didn't seem to stop with just those three men. After this, Bodhi truly became a ghost town. By 1962, after years of neglect, it was designated a state historical park by the state of California, and legends about this place seemingly stuck in time. One such legend is known as the Bodhi Curse. Supposedly, if visitors take anything from this town, even a pebble, they will forever be cursed with terrible misfortune. One such victim claimed to have been struck with horrible luck and tragedy until they returned an item that they had stolen from a previous visit. And this isn't entirely speculation or superstition, however. The park's own rangers claim it's a real phenomenon. Years ago, they began to keep a log of anyone who would offer to tell them that they were taking something from Bodhi and the logbook also contains pages upon pages of those same people returning those items and claiming the notorious curse. The curse is said to be perpetuated by the ghosts that live there, who guard their riches against thieves as they are still searching for new gold. And despite the park rangers vouching for the happenings, many believe it's nothing more than silly superstition, but I for one wouldn't want to be the guy to test this out. There are many places I'd be willing to go to investigate, with Bodhi being one of them. But why take the chance of destroying your life for something that wasn't yours to begin with? Another ghostly legend is that of the haunting of the J.S. Kane house at the corner of Green and Park Streets. James Stewart Kane, or J.S. Kane, had arrived in Bodie when he was just 25 years old. Soon after his arrival, he entered the lumber transporting business and soon became a mogul. He would go on to own the Bodie Bank, a leasing company, and became the primary property owner within the town. The home is said to be haunted by the restless spirit of a Chinese maid. The maid apparently loves children who visit, but hates adults. Adults sleeping in the old house have said to be awakened, frightened, and breathless, feeling the weight of another person sitting on their chest. Others have experienced doors opening and closing by themselves, and have even seen the apparition of the spirit herself, knitting in the chair in the main room. And this isn't the only place that's claimed to be haunted that still stands there. The Mendicini House is called home to several friendly ghosts. One who is thought to be Mrs. Mendicini herself. She loved cooking large Italian meals for her family. Guests and park rangers alike have reported smelling delicious aromas emanating from the house, although no one has cooked there for over a hundred years. Others have seen the spirit of a woman peering out of the top window of the Duckenbew house almost as if the woman is still alive, but trapped in another time, still dressed as though it's the early 1900s. And yet another ghost is known as the Angel of Bodhi, 
and her home is the Bodhi Cemetery. There is an old angel statue that sits to guard her grave. The angel was a three-year-old little girl who was said to have been accidentally killed when she was hit in the head by a slipped miner's pickaxe. Visitors have heard giggling, feeling a small hand tugging on their pant legs, and others have seen a little girl run from tombstone to tombstone. But upon rushing to find her, there's never anyone there. Bodhi is now in a state of arrested decay. There are no permanent residents of the town except the park employees, and only about 10% of the original buildings still stand. In this ghost town, there are no maps, no restaurants, or recreations. Here you get the real ghost town experience. So if you find yourself in California and feel like taking a walk through time, Bodhi just might be the place for you. But just remember, don't take anything, or you just might become its newest resident ghost. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do me a favor and hit the like button. Leave me your thoughts down below. It really helps me out when you do both of those things. And also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on if you haven't already. And please, also share this video with a friend or on social media. Lastly, I also ask you to check out Debbie Energy and help support me by supporting our sponsor. I know you won't be disappointed. Until next time, guys, this has been Cody here at Mystery Archives. Stay safe out there, and take care.